a popular YouTuber who has made a few videos about ISIS has posed the question sometimes as he closes his videos out, who will stop ISIS? Who's going to stop ISIS? Will you tell me who's going to stop ISIS? And I'm going to answer that question later on in this video. For now, at the beginning of this, continuing for a little while into the video, I want to talk about Mr. Foley, the journalist that has been killed by ISIS, beheaded. This particular little short video here is a uh, former prisoner held with him who was released and he just given some thoughts on Mr. Foley. So we're, we're going to take a little listen to that now. We spent uh, seven months in, uh, in a very extreme situation together and feeling for one week we were handcuffed one to the other uh, day and night. What were the conditions like you and James were held in? In circumstances where you are held captive, uh, you develop some kind of uh, uh, survival instincts, uh, meaning that, for instance, you, you try to grab everything you can find. Uh, and James was the total opposite. I mean, basically, everything he could share, he would share it. If, if, if we were cold and we are missing blankets, he would share his blankets. If uh, we were starving and, and missing food, he would, he would share his ration. Did he cope with the conditions better than the rest of you? I would say yes, even though being an American, he was probably more targeted by, uh, by, by the snipers, by the guards. In what way? And, well, he would be uh, beaten, beaten up, probably. He was some kind of scapegoat. Why were you released? He wasn't. Some countries, many countries actually do negotiate. What do they negotiate? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it is money. I don't know if it is prisoner exchange. Uh, and some countries, like America, but also like uh, the UK, do not negotiate. And, uh, well, they put their people at risk. Everyone who sees that video is horrified. But what were you feeling when you saw that video? I'm just horrified because... Uh, because it's not, uh, it's not only a colleague who has been killed, it's also a, a friend and uh, my best cellmate. How would you like to remember James Foley? I will try, I, I, I'm afraid it will take a few days, but I will try to, to just remember a few, very few opportunities we had to, uh, to laugh loud together. And it, it did happen actually a couple of times. Well, now I want to show you. They say they tried to rescue him. Whether this is true or not, we do not know. We will go through this little article here and see what they have said. They sent a team of special operation forces to Syria in the summer to try and rescue him and some other hostages. And they're telling you this Wednesday today. They say they claim they thought they had sufficient intelligence, but when the opportunity presented itself, Obama authorized the Defense Department to move aggressively and recover our citizens. The mission was a failure. Nobody got rescued because their intelligence, where they went to get them, the hostages were not there. <clears throat> president authorized the mission because the hostages held were in danger in the hands of ISIS, who to be proper now has changed their name to ISIL. 
This is an unusual acknowledgement of a failed secret raid which came the day after the video surfaced showing them beheading Mr. Foley. The masked fighter in the video has also threatened to kill another American, Stephen Joel Sotloff, who they think is also held prisoner by the group. Oh, they had a little firefight. Claim they killed some of the other bad guys. They wouldn't detail the precise timing or location of the raid. Obama authorized the mission after determining there was sufficient intelligence and confidence in that information, which turned out to be squat if this is even real truth, which I question that it is. <clears throat> uh, part of the urgency of this mission stemmed from the belief they were the hostages were facing increased danger because of how long they have been captives and because this intelligence suggested new risks. The official declined comment on the specific intelligence but did say officials took it as a grim sign that the insurgents, I like to use that word, released hostages of other nationalities but kept the Americans captive. We never intended to disclose the operation, maybe because there never was one. An overriding concern for the safety of the hostages and for operational security made it imperative that we preserve as much secrecy as possible. Ooh, yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Well, as you heard this man say, Possibly the reason that he was released is because certain nations negotiate for release. As he said, you don't know whether it's money or, or what that's being exchanged. And then you heard him say that other nations, like the U.S., don't negotiate. But do we negotiate, actually? I think Bo Bergdahl is an example of where they, did they not do some type of a prisoner swap for a guy that... Uh, I still believe he, he wasn't taken captive. He, did, he intentionally left his unit and, and went to the, to the uh, other side on purpose because he wanted to. Oh, you have to call him a deserter. And they went after a deserter and traded off. But for this man and any other American in there, they don't seem to do negotiate. They want you to believe that they tried some type of failed operation. <clears throat> now, to answer the popular YouTuber's question, who will stop ISIS? Well, let me say this. I believe what we're about to see is different countries in the Middle East, they're probably going to uh, form a little buddy system of let's gang up on ISIS and they're going to play that game. You guys need some weapons, so here we're going to bring over these weapons and we're going to arm you. We're going to throw in a few of our own guys to be mixed in with you and then they're going to play like they're having a fight. And sometime down the line, they're going to say they got ISIS all under control and that we won. If, you, if they'll say the word, we won. And then the little Middle Easterners that we buddied up with and formed a little group with are going to get to keep those weapons. They're not going to all get in a big line and give them back. And they're going to keep them weapons for later on whenever them their little mysteries Middle Eastern buddies end up going against Israel 
That way they're all armed up with the best stuff, thanks to the U.S., and they did it out in the open right in front of you because we had to go kill ISIS. That way they don't have to funnel it through an illegal pipeline, illegally running weapons to their so-called rebels, like they did in Benghazi, and they've lied through their teeth, Hillary Clinton and everybody down the line, about that operation. They won't come clean about it because they don't want to look like dirty liars. So who's going to stop them? Nobody on this planet's going to stop them. God is going to stop them. That's who's going to stop them. So the next time this YouTuber says who's YouTuber says who's going to stop ISIS? Jesus is going to stop them. This is the table is being set for later on. You never serve dinner until all the places are set. All the utensils are out. Then it's time to eat. It's the same type of situation. The pieces are going to be put in place for the end goal. I told everybody before, Israel is the apple of God's eye. That is the most important place on earth. And these Islamic groups like ISIL, ISIS, that is the real Islam. It is not just something called radical Islam. These guys aren't practicing real Islam because these guys are radicals. That's BS. These guys are practicing the real Islam. So all you Muslims that say it's peaceful and you're not killing anybody and stuff, maybe you're on the mark for these ISIS guys, huh? Because maybe they're looking at you and saying, you're not practicing the real Islam. So we're going to make a choice for you. Either get on board or we take your head. Islam will be and is the chosen religion by Satan, Satan, however you want to pronounce it, that always throughout history comes up against belief in, in Jesus, belief in God. Call it Christianity if that's what you term it. But through history, it's always been Islam versus the real faith. And that's what it's, it is. And that's where it's going. So I'm asking every single one of you to pray to the real God, to pray to Jesus. Be an intercessor on behalf of the world, not just for your own sins or your families or your friends, for all the peoples of the world. Because if we get enough people that will take that opportunity, take that challenge that I, I meet out, that others have meted out, God can hear prayers, obviously. And if there's enough of us asking and praying for all the people of the world, even the bad people, even our enemies we're commanded to pray for, he may take the judgment and delay it. He could. With God, all things are possible. But you first have to be doing the praying. And it has to be something you take seriously because the world needs it. Look around on every square inch everywhere. It's all breaking down and it's all setting up. So ask God on behalf of the world and all the people for forgiveness for all people and for help for all people. And He'll hear you. And if He hears enough of us, he may act.